Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We are playing Monster Rancher 4, and at the end of the last episode, uh, TT pretty much uh, hip-checked some poor old lady who hurt her back. We have to go to the Togol Caves to try to find magic mushrooms to make her feel better. Most people do feel better when they eat some magic mushrooms, especially Mario. Although that's a whole different universe, and console, and game type, and let's play. Um, so we're back in the Togo Caves where we've been before. Um, I'm going to time skip most of this because you guys have seen this before. The monsters in the adventure areas do not gain levels. Now they, they get stronger as you go down in deeper floors, but you know, this monster, the Mandillo E, is the same type of Mandillo E we have fought before a hundred times. Well, a dozen times. Um, it's good for experience points and so forth, so we can uh, get some moves faster, but uh, for the most part, you know, you're not going to see anything new. Um, once you see a monster on a particular level in a particular adventure zone, you will always see that monster at a particular level in that particular adventure zone. So I'm going to time skip here until we get to the mushrooms, which I believe are on the lowest floor. We'll see. So here we are on the fourth floor. And now we have an event. The mushrooms are somewhere around here. What is it? I, I hear the voice of a monster. It's saying, be gone from my territory. Something's headed this way. Watch out, Rio. You'll find that Dingle will say that a lot as we go along because, I don't know, girl stereotypes and stuff about women not being strong enough or whatever. Anyway, that is a blobster. He's about to die. Uh, Garu got fire, fire kick, which from my side file I can tell you is a ridiculously powerful attack. Okay, you can stop beating the shit out of me now. Even though that's only one attack and not really much of anything. So I don't know if you can ever get a hold of these special monsters if you have to pull them out of discs or whatever, but uh, they are there. They all look kind of funky and doesn't matter. I got a shit ton of experience off of that. Uh, no new moves, though. Okay. Wow, that was a real tough one. Really, Dingle? Because Garu got hit once? Look, Dingle, over there. The mushroom. You're right. That must be the healing mushroom. Wow, Rio, I can't believe you remembered this. Yeah, uh, if I see something once, I rarely forget it. Yeah, the Akamura is the same way. That's why when I picked up the Gaia Stone and saw the vision... I felt like it had seen I'd seen it before, because I played Mass Effect. Come on, let's go home. we got to give this to Maru. Mar Maru. Mar Maru. All right. So that'll be our next step for this week. I just saved you guys with that time skip, by the way. Close to about uh, 20 minutes, actually. I was running around the cave for about 20 minutes. Ugh. Okay. Um, everyone seems all right, so we will do some training. Um, let's work on his accuracy. Rasta can again work on his defense and hopefully not fuck up this time. And Maynard also needs to work on his accuracy. All right. Um, like I've mentioned, oh, good job, everybody. Maynard and Garu at 100%, Rasta at 97%. It's about time you guys actually did some work. Praise. The whole defense thing kind of bothers me because <laughs> all when you tell a creature to train defense, it involves them beating the shit out of themselves. He's tossing a metal-lined wooden tub up in the air just so it concusses him in the head, so it gets stronger. I don't think every I, I don't think it all works like that in real life. I don't think repeatedly punching yourself in the face helps. Uh, good job, Maynard. I don't know why you're frustrated. You did very good today. Bah. And run over here to Garu. Praise him as well. Pet, pet, pet. Uh, and give him a potato. We'll feed everybody else next week. And I think this will allow me... Well... Why even contemplate it? Let's just do it and we'll see what happens. So we're going to go back to town, to Ryuin specifically, not Togol. We're pretty much done in Togol. Togol really only exists from here on out so we can buy some food that we can't buy from Ryuin. 
So we're hanging out at Morrow's house. Philio, we found some healing shrooms. Here they are. Thank you so much. I'll make medicine right away. Fade and fade in. You're too kind. My back feels great. And she gives me a letter from Mr. Carnub. What? You mean the FIMBA president? Precisely. Carnub is an old friend of mine. I told him about you. Really? Let's see. Dear Dingle, I heard you heard about you from Mero. You're a truly admirable kid. Excellent fighter. Have you heard about the collect- Okay, so he can't just give us a license. We have to pass a test, obviously. So there's a Kalaragi jungle. Um, jungle's littered with thingies, as he said, and we have to get them. So we need to retrieve the junk. So if we retrieve the junk and pass another test, we will get a license. All right. Sounds good to me. How about it, Dingle? Are you ready to challenge? Yes, I will take the challenge. We'll go to the Kalaragi jungle, whatever. All right, and again, since I'm here anyway, I always try to buy food uh, when I happen to be in town anyway, since that's, you know, one less thing I have to do every week. I need some more squids for, uh, whoops. I need some more squids for Maynard. I probably need to go to Togel for that, so. In fact, once the game loads, we should check how many squids we actually do have, because I don't want to be caught with my pants down. Figuratively. And literally. Oh, it's raining. Hey, it's Felia. So, this is Dingle's Ranch, huh? Okay, here I go. Hello there! Damn it, where is the Akamura when I... Well, she's in college, but where is she when I need her? Ah, for voice acting. I can't voice act anybody, let alone the girl characters. Okay, so... Blah... Okay, so this is, um... A new, uh, mechanic that's being introduced. Which I will explain once we get to the flipping loading screens. So this whole time when I've been attacking, I've been using the X button. But, um... There we go. Uh, but you can use square, circle, or X when you do an attack. And when the counter thingy comes up, if you hold L2 and hit the same button your opponent does, you will counter them. Um, so... Hitting circle makes the attack more accurate. Like that. Uh, using square makes an attack more powerful but less accurate. And hitting X is neutral. Um, so if your opponent is attacking and you do a counter and you hit the same button they do, you automatically counter the attack. Um, if you attempt to counter and hit the wrong button, which, remember, you only have a one-third of a chance to hit the correct button, um, but if you hit the wrong button, they are guaranteed to hit you. And one of the frustrations I had when I played the game uh, years ago was that I, it, it didn't occur to me that, okay, yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, TD magically appears, now we're going to have a two-on-two -two fight. Anyway, um, it didn't occur to me that you don't have to counter. Like, you don't, you know, if you see the counter thing, sometimes it's it's in your best interest not to attack. because Or not to try to counter. If they only have a 10% chance of hitting you, and you decide to counter, then you then have a 66% chance of missing the counter and having them hit you anyway. So, you know, there's a point where you may as well just let your monster see if he can dodge. Because a lot of times, enemies have low accuracy too. You should only often counter when the enemy has high accuracy. And now that I know that, now that that occurs to me, um, yes, okay, thank you. Now that that occurs to me, especially in my side file, I have been doing a lot less counter attempts. I've just been letting my monsters try to dodge it on their own. And they do a pretty good job, usually. So, uh, and, and that little secondary tutorial was how to use tag, uh, how to perform in tag battles and tag matches, which we already know from running around the stupid caves. So, yeah, okay, she runs off. All right, so we're back to what we need to do. I'm going to save, since I didn't save the last time around. Um, so... Now, now that we know how to do tag battles as well, that also opens up additional uh, 
matches. I'm gonna see if there's one anytime soon. No, not anytime soon. Or not at all, actually. So, uh, the nice thing about tag battles is everybody gets a monster star. Uh, everybody who participates in it gets a monster star, which um, can save a lot of time when you're trying to train monsters up and uh, get them to be promoted. Official competitions are never tag matches, but uh, it helps. It certainly helps. Saves time. So, alright, should be good. And as you can see, I'm going week to week now. Ah, good job, Garou. We will praise you. Everyone else will simply get food. Garou, where are you? You are? I praise you. You're tired and you still managed 100%. That's excellent. Alright, and then... You get food. So, uh... Once we achieve the next storyline milestone and get an official breeder's license a lot more tournaments will open up for us including hopefully some tag matches uh right now though it's i only have four squids Ugh. well we're all a little tired so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go actually to toggle so i can buy some squids and then um Next week we'll have everybody rest, and then we'll go into the Kalaragi jungle. I want to pronounce it Calamari for some reason, just because it's phonetically similar. All right, we're gonna buy 40 squids. And see, we're kind of running a little low on cash, so we're gonna have to start entering some tournaments soon, just to uh, get some money going. Uh, money eventually becomes a non-factor. Um, Especially when you have an upper-class monster doing competitions, because you will get a shit ton of money as a result. <coughs> but, uh... Yeah, okay. Schedule. But for now, money is a little bit tight. Which is fine. I mean, that's why you should be early in a game. I remember in Pokemon a lot of times, like, you are having a money crisis for most of the game. And then once you finally stop having a mi money crisis, that's when you know that your Pokemon are really powerful and you're ready to fight and do some awesome things. Um, this game is similar. And you can tell that uh, we're, we are kind of weak because Garou, Garou ha is a C-class and he already has one star. Uh, and he's pretty much on his way. But the other two are still E-class. I haven't been working on them very much. Um, mostly for the Let's Play, just trying to get it over with. And generally, when I'm doing these adventure deals, I don't beeline to the exit. I just try to... Um, my, my strategy is to uh, check every room on every floor. Uh, make sure I don't miss any treasures and stuff. And that nets me a lot of experience points as well. Where's the... There it is. I knew there was a hot spot on that one. So Maynard here has the high search trait, so he's going to fly up there and hopefully find a chest. All right. And what do we get? An accessory stone. Or <clears throat> accuracy stone. Awesome, since accuracy is my favorite trait. I've always been like that in fighting games. I always prefer speed characters and accurate characters over power hitters. Um... Like, I totally get why someone would have the opposite view, but I like being able to fly around the screen and kite an enemy to death. Um, I'm not good at fighting games, though, but I tend to prefer prefer that kind of fighting style anyway. Um, especially in, like, MMOs. Uh, one of my favorite MMOs, City of Heroes, which unfortunately closed down, my favorite character of that game... Oh, no, it's a Jack in the Cho! Uh... My favorite character I made in City of Heroes was this Katana chick uh, who had an incredibly high dodge and an incredibly accurate attack. So she wasn't very strong, but you couldn't, you know, enemy mobs couldn't touch her. Oh, why am I using the power attack? Should we just using standard? Um, God damn it! Ugh, for the love of... Oh, God, this is going to be a long battle. 
Ugh. Okay. Thank you for finally missing. Ugh. Um. What was I talking about? Oh, there was this katana chick uh, who was. Uh, she couldn't be touched, and she couldn't miss. So I, I could never, like, it was hard to finish, a, you know, an enemy if I was in a team. But she was a frontline fighter because she just, she could not be touched. And she would rarely miss. So it, it gave a chase attack. So it gave um, a, a very, I don't know, I just like that style of play rather than a heavy hitter. It kind of depends on the game, um, but I suck at fighting games, so I, I guess I tend to like speed characters because at least then I know, or my eyes are entertained by someone flying around the screen. Like in uh, Dead or Alive, I suck at that game. I almost let's played it, but every time I play fighting games, I always rage. Anyway, uh, in Dead or Alive 5, I always play Kasumi because she's a very fast, quick striker who uh, is pretty accurate. Her moves are easy to understand, although she gets schooled by basically everyone since I don't know how the fuck to counter in that game, and I just suck at fighting games. But um, now in this game, um, speed doesn't really matter so much, I don't think. Uh, I haven't really found a use for I think what speed does is it charges your guts faster, which you know, lets you attack faster. I don't think speed affects your dodge rate. Um, if any of you are familiar with the Monster Rancher series, go ahead and correct me on that one if I am wrong. And if you know, I guess I could always make a character who excels in speed and just test it. Maybe I should do that for Monster 4 or 5 whenever I uh, generate them. Um, but... Uh, anyway, I, I don't think speed really matters, but accuracy certainly does. So I tend to try to specialize all of my characters on accuracy and power. Uh, that way they often hit, and when they do hit, they hit hard. They're pure offense, of course. Their defense suffers as a result, and a lot of my monsters will die quickly if they get attacked. Um, so, you know, but that's my strategy. And the cool thing with this game is you can actually save what's called versus data where it makes a copy of your monsters. Um, and you can do that over several save files. So you can actually play one-off matches from the main screen uh, just to kind of test your monsters. And, um, you know, if you have multiple people playing the game in your family, everyone can have their own versus data, and then they can kind of spar with each other. It's the only multiplayer mode in the game. If the game existed nowadays, I'm sure there would be online and ranked competitions and all that. Things that I probably wouldn't play since I don't really get into it. Uh, but there we are. So, anyway. Alright, so we are here in the Kalaragi jungle. Like I've said before, um, I'm only playing this one out since this is the first time we've seen it. Uh, any further explorations of Kalaragi jungle will be time-skipped or time-lapsed. Um... You didn't freeze, did you? Oh, gosh. That kind of scared me. Uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah. That's what we're doing. I'm out of things to say. This is why I like doing Let's Plays with somebody rather than trying to solo them. It's always easier to... Kick to the face! Anyway. It's always easier to get, have a give and take with people. Um... Hell, I may even broadcast this live on stream one day. Um, I do know that we are coming to a point. It's after either the next milestone or maybe the milestone after that. That there is a long period of time before anything can really happen. Uh, so, I like... Uh, that's usually the time when I fire up a movie or listen to music while I play the game. Because there really is very little that happens in the way of story. It's just grinding. And I don't mind grinding um, in general. Why do I keep using the power attack? Ow. Kick to the face. Um, Pink Princess D. Anyway. Uh, so, I don't know. I might broadcast it on Twitch. That way I can uh, I have some people to talk to. Yes, I will abandon Earth lore because I much, much prefer Fire lore. And we got reference. 
which is something Garu hates. But we also got a new attack, but I'm not going to use it because it is an intelligence attack and Garu is kind of stupid. So we're just going with straight attacks. So that'll be it for today's episode, but come back tomorrow where we will be continuing to explore the Kalaragi jungle as we are trying to find the junk for Karnab, the president of Fimba, or whoever the hell he is. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. See you tomorrow, guys.